Okay, here's a prediction for November, one that I didn't make up. There will be World War Three before the election and the election won't happen. That'd be surprising because, you know, if, if war were to break out, I don't see that as being an excuse to not have elections. However, I guess the argument is if war breaks out and there are elections, Joe Biden wins. But I don't know if he's the guy who can actually get a polling bump from being at war. The general idea is that wartime presidents win. I got a feeling that if a war breaks out, people will be terrified of a Joe Biden presidency. And even Trump's staunchest critics are going to be like, "Ah, we'll take the crazy guy in Donald Trump and not the guy whose brain doesn't work. But the news we have right now is actually fairly alarming because it seems like, at the very least, the U.S. is gearing up for World War III. That's right. We've got two buzz phrases here at TimCast. It's either Civil War or World War III. It's never just regional conflict. It must be one of the two most serious outcomes that could possibly happen. Look, I don't know how this turns out. And there's been a lot of conversation about World War III for a very long time. So who knows? I remember back during Operation Protective Edge, I think it was called. This is uh, t- it's 10 years ago in Israel. There was fear that World War Three would ignite. For real. So Israel goes in this campaign against uh, Gaza. And then I got all these journalists who cover the Middle East saying, like, if Iran takes action over the, the attacks on Gaza, it's going to pull in other countries. The U.S. will be forced to, to be involved. You're then going to see BRICS nations. It's going to light up fair. It wasn't a wrong assessment, but it was a little premature. Now, what are we looking at? Well, now Israel's actually going in, has gone into Gaza. There are many civilian casualties. Uh, Iran has been striking U.S. targets with uh, proxies and militias. And there's a fear that Iran might actually launch a missile strike. They're closing their airspace for drills. On top of that, the U.S. is embroiled in war in in Eastern Europe against Russia. China is now engaging in conflict with the Philippines in the in the uh, South Pacific. And it looks like the pieces are lined up substantially more so than they were 10 years ago. But let's go through this or break it down. At the same time, we're hearing this support for Israel in the United States is going down because Americans don't want to be involved in war. I just got to have to break it to you, everybody. It's patently clear people don't like conflict. And so whether it's the nation going to war or a guy in a bar having someone talk smack, people don't want to fight. You ever see Fight Club? Great movie, by the way. I can't believe it's been 25 years. And uh, there's that there's that scene where Tyler Durden says your homework is to go start a fight and lose. Most people do everything they can to avoid a fight. It's the smart thing to do. And then there's that scene where it's like, you know, they shove people and then the people are just like, leave me alone. And then there's that scene where he knocks the Bible out of the priest's hand and then sprays it with water. And then the priest is like, wow, and that gets him really angry. But most people don't want to fight. The American people looking at what's going on in the world would prefer we don't fight. And unfortunately for the deep state, Joe Biden is in this wishy-washy position. And it looks like your only opportunity is to support Donald Trump. At the very least, Donald Trump is pro-Israel. Not like, you know, not pro-Israel the way the Democrats were 10 years ago. But now that Democrats fear losing, I'll put it this way. Joe Biden probably supports Israel way more in terms of military than Trump would. And he's going to pretend like he doesn't because they need the progressive vote. We'll see. But let's let's uh, jump into the news. Here's a story from the Daily Mail. Joe Biden tells Iran, don't attack Israel with Middle East on a knife edge as Tehran closes airspace for military drills and Washington warns missile barrage could be imminent. President tells Ayatollah U.S. support for Israel is ironclad. Quote, as I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and proxies is ironclad. And, you know, I actually feel kind of bad imitating Joe Biden's voice, but sounding so clear. Let me say it again. I'm clear. We're going to do it again. OK, now you don't even know what I'm saying. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. Biden said at a press conference with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. Biden's top diplomat, Anthony Blinken, affirmed his words and told Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, in a phone call that the U.S. would stand behind Israel if Iran decides to attack. An attack by Iran or its proxies against military and government targets in Israel are imminent, Bloomberg News reported. 
citing intelligence sources, with one source saying it's more a matter of when, not if. Tensions in the Middle East today flared after an Iranian news agency published a report on X saying all airspace over Tehran had been closed for military drills before quickly removing the post and denying it had ever issued the news. But Iran has promised to retaliate for an Israeli strike in Syria on April 1st that killed several senior Iranian commanders when Israeli forces hit the Iranian embassy building in Damascus. There's been a lot of news coming out of the Middle East, too. I saw one tweet that said that Israel was pulling ambassadors. I haven't verified that, but it certainly seems like with all the news we got, yo, we got Russia, we got Iran, we got China, baby, World War Three is right around the corner. The airstrike killed General Mohammad Reza Zahedi, who led the elite Quds force in Lebanon and Syria until 2016, according to Iran's Revolutionary Guard. It also killed Zahedi's deputy, General Mohammad Haji uh, Hadi Hajriahimi, Hajriahimi, trying to pronounce that right, probably getting it wrong, uh, Hajriahimi, and five other officers. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah, Ayatollah, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei said, said that Israel must be punished and it shall be for the strikes on the embassy. He noted in a speech Wednesday for Aid al Fitr that attacking an embassy means that they have attacked our soil. So let me just make that clear for all of you. They're saying outright, Israel attacked an embassy. Embassies are the, the territory of the nation for which represents an embassy. Like our embassies are U.S. soil. That's the way that's the way it works. Uh, you know, there's a funny story about I think it's George Washington. I think it was Washington. He vowed never to set foot in Britain again. So when they built a statue for him, they imported U.S. soil for uh, to put on the ground where they could plant the statue of George Washington. People take their territory very seriously. Now, I get it. I get it. A statue is very different from blowing up an embassy. Quote, the evil regime made a mistake and should be punished and will be punished, he added, according to IRNA, the state news agency. Iran's main proxy group is Hezbollah, which is based in southern Lebanon and has been trading fire with Israeli forces almost daily since the war in Gaza erupted in October. Israel has not explicitly acknowledged it was behind the attack, but it has put its military on alert. And Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz, that's his name, really. Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz wrote an X. If Iran attacks from its territory, Israel will react and attack Iran. There are fears an open war between Israel and Iran could turn into a much broader conflict after Israel's foreign minister, Israel Katz, said in apparent response to Ayatollah's promise of retaliation that Israel would respond if Iran attacks from its own soil. I love that. That wishy-washy, we know you're attacking us, but as long as it doesn't come from your soil, it's fine. Laughably absurd. While this is happening, U.S. support for Israel hits a new low as Iran threat looms. This from Newsweek. They say Israel's on high alert for the promised Iranian strike, which U.S. officials said on Wednesday could be imminent. Quote, we're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security, Biden told reporters. I, I just I got to ask you this. Look, I don't I don't know why we're involved in Israel's wars. I think the reality is that Israel is a proxy state for the United States. And this is what I really can't stand about the Israel derangement syndrome people. They're like, Israel is is puppeteering in the United States and Jewish people working in media are, are, are pushing this and APAC isn't registering. And I'm like, guys, correlation and causation. The United States uses Israel as a proxy in the Middle East. OK, it's 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 I, I, I think it's laughable that the U.S. at the behest of Israel. No, Israel's at the, at the behest of the U.S. Simply put, they say new poll, uh, new polls, a new poll re released this week shows that the American public support for Israel is waning across the political spectrum amid its devastating offensive on the Gaza Strip, a conflict that has unleashed fresh violence across the Middle East and put pressure on U.S. forces there. I got to admit. We face a rock in a hard place. Let me tell you something, my friends. I've been to Israel. I've been to Tel Aviv. Beautiful. And uh, free. You walk around, you do what you want. And there's there's rules and there's laws and there's all that stuff, too. But it's impressive. I've also been to other countries. I've been to Egypt and Morocco. Not that I've been to anything more serious. Maybe Tunisia or Libya would be more, more serious. But, you know, for instance, in Egypt, they take their religious law very seriously. Not as seriously as some countries. But, for instance, you're not allowed to gamble or eat bacon. You, 
Tourist, not allowed. At the hotel, they had bacon. I'm putting it in air quotes. So I go down for breakfast at the Hilton, and they have, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, t- tomatoes, eggs, bacon, or whatever. And the bacon is beef, no pork. They had a casino in the Hilton. This was wild. There was a casino. It was fun. I didn't game or uh, play any games or anything. There were people playing some game. I don't know. I don't remember what they were playing. Blackjack, probably. And there was a sign at the front of the door saying, if you are Muslim, you cannot, uh, if you are an Egyptian citizen, you couldn't come in. It was only for tourists. Crazy. I suppose they're fine with, um, I don't know, uh, what, what's the right word for someone who's a non-believer? Not someone who abandoned the religion, but they don't care. If you gamble, they take your money. But not if you're Muslim and not if you're a citizen of Egypt. But uh, I, I say this because in Israel, things were, were nice. You know, it was, it, was, it was relatively peaceful, despite all the things that are going on. And I say this because I recognize the difficulty in, man, there is a real question of what happens if Iran attacks Israel. If the United States does not get involved, how do things spiral out of control and where does that lead us? Ben Shapiro has warned of something akin to the Samson option, they call it. Iran attacks Israel. The U.S. says, look, we're not going to be involved. Israel then says, we will not be destroyed. Fires nukes, triggering a greater conflict for which we'll be roped into. Ben Shapiro's argument is that the U.S. should be involved to deter any potential escalation into World War III. Fair point. I really do think so. I don't know that I completely agree with that being the action we should take, but it is a point we must consider. Where are we better off? Stopping Israel's war from escalating by being heavily involved or saying, you know what, you're on your own, putting Israel in a, in a heightened sense, a heightened threat, a threat position to which they say, OK, then hellfire it is. I'm not I'm not saying I agree with Ben. I'm saying he makes a good point. One that's worth actually contemplating. I'm not a big fan of American intervention into foreign countries. I do think, however, there are harsh realities we may not like to accept based on our morality. That is, me personally, America first. Close the border. Or I should say secure the border. I'm actually for immigration. I just think unfettered, unchecked, illegal immigration destroys us. We want to secure the border. We want to bring back jobs. We want to bring our troops home. We want to get NATO to pay their fair share. I'm fine with international treaties and military alliances and all that stuff. That's obvious. But I don't like the idea of the U.S. being involved all over the world the way they are. Afghanistan, Iraq, big mistakes. Syria, big mistake. And then you take a look what's going on in Israel. And then there's a question of this. Okay, where we are right now is different from where we want to be. So so I'll put it this way. I can sit here and say Donald Trump is the best president of my lifetime. And people will then say, oh, yeah, Tim, what about all the drone strikes he engaged in and the lack of transparency? Ha! You're not actually anti-war. And I'm like, dude, I'm taking the best I can get. Like, if there was a candidate who was polling double digits and was poised to win, who was going to do all these things domestically we thought we needed, and was 100% anti-war and had no, no record of drone strikes, sure, we could vote for him. But right now we have Donald Trump pulling our troops back from, from our setting a timeline for withdrawal from Afghanistan, getting our troops out of Syria, at least trying to, decimating ISIS. And they say, yeah, but he up drone strikes. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's what you'd expect as we're pulling our troops out. Imperfect. The best we can get. Which brings us to the current situa- situation that we're in. I believe it would be beautiful to just be like, we should not be involved and we're going to say, yeah, absolutely. Like Ukraine, why are we entering that conflict? Israel, we're deeply involved in that conflict. And I'd like to see us removed from it. I don't understand why we are funding Israel wars or Israel's wars or even involved to foreign country. We should, we should be worrying about ourselves. The problem and the reality is I don't have a good answer for you. I really don't because we are deeply involved. And there are American citizens and dual citizens in uh, who have been taken hostage. I don't know. What you, I don't I don't have to tell you. I, I just tell you this. It is not as easy to just say we we cut funding 100 percent disappear. Because then the region destabilizes and then it's war and conflict. I will say the same thing of Afghanistan. I don't think the appropriate move was to just shut everything down and up and leave. We had talked about this numerous times when uh, when it was going down. And it is to slowly pull your forces back slowly 
and require the Afghan security forces to start picking up the slack on those those key roles. Instead, Joe Biden abandons Bagram Air Force Base, allowing looters to come and pillage it, cutting off air support and logistics for pilots who abandoned their helicopters and just fled. Yeah, that was a terrible idea. So we can't do that. We can't do in Israel what Biden did in Afghanistan. But now we have a problem. Iran's threatening war. And here we are attached to the hip to this country. We should not have been. So again, I'm not telling you I have a good answer. I really don't know. I'm saying consider the, the, the potentials. And that's why I said Ben Shapiro makes a good argument. Now, I know Ben Shapiro is biased on the issue as a Jewish man who has family uh, in Israel. He's deeply concerned about Israel being protected. Fine. Fair point. But I do still think regardless of that, there is a deep consideration consideration we must make for if the U.S. right now says, you know what, we're cutting off all support, we're cutting all funding and we're leaving. Will Israel just say then Samson option it is? And I'm not saying it's a good reason to stay. I'm saying consider what happens if that does. And maybe your answer is it's worth the risk. Absolutely fair point. I'm not saying I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying I have a good answer. I'm just saying we really got to consider these things. I don't know that the end result of where we're at is going to be is going to be good. What I can say is, I guess you don't want to go cold turkey. I mean, some things maybe, but I think right now we're we're we, we like I just I, I think it's fair to say, like, we're in a rock and a hard place. We're screwed over by the previous administration's support for the conflict in the Middle, in the Middle East, probably because they wanted to prevent China and Russia from being able to take this territory and access these resources. The U.S. wanted to surround Iran because the U.S. wanted to invade, invade Iran. It was part of its plans. So they go into a, Iraq and Afghanistan. They provide massive support to Israel because Israel provides an intelligence operating base and weapons manufacturing for the U.S. for their operations in Israel. And now here we are staring down the barrel of not just war with Iran, but Russia and China as well. The U.S. bit off more than it could chew, and it is a disaster. And maybe the reality is it is just a disaster. And if that's the case, maybe we, we do just back down and we say we're done with this. We shouldn't have been here in the first place. I don't know what happens after that. I know with the fall of Afghanistan, China moves in and starts harvesting all that lithium. And here we are. Russia from The Guardian advising against travel to the Middle East. Here we go, baby. Russia on Thursday advised against travel to the Middle East and German airline Lufthansa extended a suspension of its flights to Tehran as the region was kept on edge by Iran's threat to retaliate against Israel for an attack in Syria. I'm actually surprised that Germany has flights to Iran. I didn't realize that was a thing. Iran has vowed revenge for the April 1st airstrike on its embassy compound in Damascus. According to Reuters, Russia's foreign ministry told citizens they should refrain from traveling to the Middle East, especially to Israel, Lebanon and the Palestinian territories. Quote, we strongly recommend that Russian citizens refrain from traveling to the region, especially to Israel, Lebanon and the Palestinian territories, except in cases of extreme necessity. The tense situation in the Middle East region persists. So we get it. Here we go. The spokesperson said Lufthansa had decided not to operate a flight from Frankfurt to Tehran last week to avoid the crew having to disembark to spend the night in the Iranian capital. Lufthansa and its subsidiary, Austrian Airlines, are the only two Western carriers flying into Tehran, which is mostly served by Turkish and Middle Eastern airlines. Austrian Airline Airlines, which flies from Vienna to Tehran, to Tehran six times a week, said it was planning to fly on Thursday but was adjusting timing to avoid an overnight layover. Take a look at the flight patterns. This one's really interesting. You'll see that there are now flights that go from like Hong Kong and they'll go up and they will turn right. You can't see my hand. Turn right to avoid flying over Russian airspace. I think we're at war. I think that's the truth. We are at war. They just don't want to admit it. Let me show you this. We do have this story here. I'll mention it briefly. Iran is days away from becoming a nuclear power, they report. Great. More fear mongering. How China is hacking America from Newsweek. That's right. China raises private hacker army to probe foreign governments and the scale to which they are attacking the United States is unprecedented. They say the sheer scale of China's latest attempt to infiltrate U.S. infrastructure has surprised the entire cybersecurity industry. So you mean to tell me we have three boats which have lost power. <clears throat> one destroyed a bridge, one hit a bridge, and one was stopped just before it could have potentially knocked out a major brid bridge in New York. And when we say, could this be a cyber attack? They go, no, 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 you're crazy. By the way, 
The scale of the cyber attack from China on the US is unprecedented and we are surprised. And I'm like, okay, so why should I not be concerned about potential cyber attacks, which could shut down navigation systems or destroy mass major uh, US infrastructure? This is what you need to realize, man. When World War Three happens, oof, when? Hopefully it doesn't. But if it does, your water will just stop working one day. You'll be in a decently sized city and you'll turn your faucet on and nothing. Why? Because China will have hacked into the industrial control systems of the main water reclamation facility and turn the pumps off. It really is that simple. And then when they try to go in the computers to fix it, they're locked out. Why? Hard drive's been encrypted. Yep. There are a bunch of interesting cyber attack techniques. There was like, there was one thing a long time ago, it was like a worm bomb or something. It was a file that had a, the code just kept replicating itself. So it jammed up the entire computer with a self-replicating code so that you couldn't do anything. And I think we've defended ourselves from rudimentary attacks like that. But now you've got these ransomware encryption uh, uh, bombs. As soon as it gets on your computer, it encrypts your hard drive and you can't access it. You don't have the code. These things will pop up on your screen saying, send this money now or we will encrypt your computer. And then it's like, you'll never use it again. All your data is lost. That same technique without the ransom attacks an industrial control system that's not properly air gapped or isolated. And then they can't get in to fix the machine. And what do you do? No water. And that can happen all over. They can mess with local GPS, local data centers. You know what Eric Prince told me on, on the culture where he said, look, Everybody he knows who's been in a situation like this with civil war or whatever unrest, it happens instantly. One day everything's fine. The next day you wake up, there's no electricity, no water, and no internet. And then it's good luck. Do you have a radio? I'm not kidding. Do you have a radio? Because if the, if the grid goes down, how are you going to be able to try and collect information? And information is one of the most powerful tools in any conflict. So they have those radios that you can crank to charge, and you got to do a lot of cranking. Maybe you can uh, bolt it down to a two by four, then strap a bike chain around the, the, the crank and pedal to charge up your radio. Solar panels would be good, but I recommend a radio. I'd also recommend that you guys download survival guides onto your phone right now. Hopefully nothing happens and it's fear mongering, but we'll see. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.